Today we're showing a little love to those of y'all that play in 10-team leagues. It's not many of y'all left out there. I, I play in one. Our most popular league, the E-Town Get Down. 10-teamer. The high school friends. Those are all the friends I can muster. All right? So I want to show a little love to the 10-teamers out there. Talk a little strategy. How it differs from 12-teamers. But we'll we'll get into a bunch of different player talk throughout. So even if you're in a 12-14-team league, this will be helpful in one way or another. So we're on underdog. I've got the one... Oh, they're giving me the 110. I got the turn in the 10 team league. That's fine. Settings are as follows half PPR, one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, 110, one tight end. So, pretty standard scoring settings. Uh, if you want to be in these drafts with us going forward, all you got to do is download the Underdog app. It'll be the first link down below. And I throw all of the links of the drafts that I'm in into our Discord, linked also down below, free to join. So make sure you go do both of those things. If it's your first time on Underdog, use promo code BDGE right there. BDGE will get you a 100% deposit match on the platform. All of these drafts are completely, they're all paid for, meaning that you are playing for money in every league. You are competing against people that are taking it seriously, so you won't have any fucked up ADP. So you know this shit's real. All right, so we've got the first three picks off the board. We've got Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey. Now, in the 10-team league, I have not done one of these yet this year, so it makes me curious as to where I should go early on. We're seeing the wide receiver trend hit early and often here. So do we follow suit there, or do we zig, knowing that maybe there's more wide receivers available later on? The way that I think most of these drafts have gone, I think you're way more likely to find a group of running backs that you like later on than wide receivers. Sixth, seventh round, I think, is when you can be nailing the J.K. Dobbinses, the Cam Akers, those types, especially on the turn where I'm sitting. So I'm thinking the move is to actually be a fucking fish and follow the trend here with wide receivers, even if okay, cool. So A.J. Brown fell to me at 10. I think we're going to grab both A.J. Brown, and we can go C.D. Lamb, we can go Devontae Adams, we can go Amon Ra, and we can go Jalen Waddle. I've drafted so much Jalen Waddle, and I want to take him here, but I do want to diversify my teams on underdog a little bit. It's one of the things that I preach to you guys, especially if you're on underdog, you're going to end up doing – these things are so addicting. You're going to end up doing 100 drafts on this thing throughout the – course of the summer so my piece of advice would be to diversify the revenue if you've taken Jalen Waddle at the turn 40 times maybe think about sprinkling in a little CD Lamb or Devontae Adams I actually made a video yesterday talking shit about Devontae Adams right but even on here when I draft 100 teams maybe I want to fuck around and take him somewhere because he'll have his big weeks I think the AJ Brown Devontae Adams stack is cool I don't see myself ever really landing with CD Lamb so I'm going to grab him here, and this will be my one team throughout the summer where I got A.J. Brown, I got C.D. Lamb, and then we're not on the clock for another 18 picks. The reason I'm a little hesitant on C.D. Lamb there is the passing offense. I'm a little bit weary about what we see in Dallas. We got Mike McCarthy on the controller. He's the one flicking the sticks over there. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a tough time deciphering, right, because up until this point, everything Mike McCarthy has said has been, we want to run the ball more. We get rid of Kellen Moore, who is – a pace guy, a pass guy, all the stuff we like for fantasy football. And I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to be good for Dak. It's not going to be good for CD. It's not going to be good for the passing offense overall. We also have Michael Gallup back at full strength. We got Brandon Cooks coming in, but Don Schultz is gone. So they talk about how they want to run the ball and how he, Mike McCarthy wants to run the ball more. However, every action item that they have addressed this offseason has been the complete opposite. And I'm someone who in life Learn this the hard way, as most of y'all probably have. You always take actions over words. Words are meaningless when the actions contradict those words. So what I'm seeing is they let Zeke go. They let their thumper go. They added Ronald Jones. Does he even make the roster? I don't know. They draft Deuce Vaughn, who's five foot four. And um, I realize every time I talk about Deuce Vaughn, he gets shorter and shorter. I got to stop disrespecting that man. He, he, he a dog. They add pass catchers. They don't bring in another running back really so it's all of their actions are going directly contradictory to what Mike McCarthy is saying maybe so maybe I need to slow the roll here with completely fading the Dallas pass offense I, I think these are subtle moves that show us which way things are going uh, all right so we got CeeDee Lamb we got Jalen Waddle Amon Ra Austin Eckler Chris Olave Devontae Adams so we have Devontae Adams going off after Chris Olave that is the first time I've ever seen that I'm gonna assume it's because we're drafting with people who watch my videos and I just made a video about 
fading Devontae Adams. Now, I'm not taking Devontae Adams after Chris Olave. Like that is where I cross the line. That is where we need to simmer down. Chris Olave at the 2 5 in a 10 man league is basically what? Ooh, the 2 1. That is crazy. Holy sheesh. Now we're starting to see some running backs go off. Barkley at the 2 8, and Nick Chubb at the 2 9. T. Higgins, Jalen Hurts. I can just show you guys the board. I don't know why I'm taking the hard way. Long route, the scenic route. Jalen Hurts, Jonathan Taylor. We're not, still not up for about 10 picks. So what I'm going to show you right now is some fucking... One, Underdog put their season-long props up. So uh, if y'all didn't know, if this is your first time getting introduced to Underdog, they also have pick -ems. They are slowly transforming into a version of a sports book. So you could come on here and fucking win a lot of money outside of just best ball. And they put up their season-long props yesterday or two days ago so we've got passing yards and passing touchdowns and they've got running backs and they've got wide receivers and all of this stuff and we'll be making individual videos on my favorite picks throughout i put a slip in yesterday that i will go to in a second i just want to make sure i don't miss my pick so i got like five picks so again if you throw 10 bucks onto the underdog platform and you use promo code bdge they're going to double whatever you put down whatever money you put into the account up to $100. So if you put $100, you will have $200. You could spend $100 on season-long props, which, again, if you're a fish, you take the over. Everything looks enticing. You always go lower on the season-long props. I promise you. And then spend $100 on best ball drafts. You could literally do 30 best ball drafts, $33 best ball drafts over the course of the summer, and you will be so fucking prepped for your fantasy league. You will be so ready to rip for your goddamn friends, family, work, fish league. I promise. Put me down here a little bit. Oh, we got two more picks till I'm up. Yeah, sorry, John. Sorry, I got to fucking get off Twitter a little bit. Oh, and also, if you deposit right now, they have literally a fucking... Oh, the, well, this was last night. Damn, I filmed this on Friday. But they, they put these free squares up all the time. Literally, Jimmy Butler, 0.5 points. They just want people on the platform. They want to play with you. And they want you to play with them. So they put things like that absolutely for free for you to nail oh okay this is interesting we're at the turn now josh allen is there lamar jackson i haven't done a lamar jackson mark andrews stack which is intriguing but i don't think i could take lamar jackson while josh allen is on the board we have Brees hall and i already told y'all dalvin cook's going to new york so i think what i'm going to do here is go josh allen and then i really like amari cooper here i'm a little bit nervous that d hop ends up in Cleveland. I think that's without a doubt a possibility of a landing spot with him. But if he doesn't, I actually think Amari Cooper is probably the most underrated wide receiver in fantasy drafts right now. Amari Cooper just had a pretty much a career year with Jacoby Brissett. And if Deshaun Watson is playing anything like the camp reports are suggesting he's going to play, then Amari Cooper is going to be the one that we've always seen Deshaun Watson absolutely feed. Going back to any of his time in Houston, man, it's it's the same thing. It's, it's DeAndre Hopkins. When he's not there, it's fucking Will Fuller. Like, he just feeds his one. And so does Jacoby Brissett, which is why Cooper had a big year last year. But if Watson is that same player, like, Cooper's going to go dynamite. And you're getting him as, what, the wide receiver 17, 18, or something like that. So I love Cooper where he's going right now. So the team so far, let me move myself up here, is Josh Allen, A.J. Brown, CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper. We'll start to look at running backs probably in the middle rounds later. Um, I think when I'm back up, like I will probably get my choice of some of these guys like the uh, Kenneth Walker, Joe Mixon, J.K. Dobbins, Miles Sanders, Pierce. Obviously, they're not like my top pick. I'm not fucking fuming excited about them being my RB1 and whatever, but um, you can definitely do worse after starting with some fucking absolute studs at the pass catching position. You also start three wide receivers in these drafts. So, you know, just give and take here. Um, back to, yeah, I'm, what I'm saying with, with underdog is like they run these specials all the time where they're just giving you fucking free squares and free money, basically. They're going to be doing this a ton during football season, and obviously we'll be covering that. So if you're new to the platform, might as well get on now. Might as well hit this Jimmy Butler. Where they'll probably do like two or three more throughout the NBA Finals. You don't got to know anything about basketball to know fucking Jimmy B is going to score a bucket. I mean, X out of that. Let me X out of Twitter. And uh, yeah, let's let's make let's talk about some season long props. Let me talk about the one that I just put in yesterday. I think. Uh, pick them. So I took the under on all four of these players. I took Darren Waller under 750 receiving yards. Devontae Adams 1325. Miles Sanders 925. Marshawn White 800. And let's kind of break down why I feel this particular way about these players. It's not necessarily that I hate any of these players, but the way that season long props work, you guys are going to get onto the platform. You're going to get wildly excited about everybody. You say, oh my God, that's obviously he's going to go over. Obviously he's going to go over. Obviously he's going to go over. They, they all of them look enticing from the over. The over hits when a player's season 
goes perfectly. The over hits if a player plays 16 to 17 games and the player does not lose snaps to a backup player, the player does not get hurt. Let's say you have a high ankle sprain and you miss three games and you are uh, and you miss three games and you are lingered for like two or three more, you're not hitting your over. So everything has to go right in order for a player to hit his over. So many things can go wrong. One of like so many things can go wrong in order for a player to hit the under. Again, the injury. I, I'm not sure exactly what the rules are in terms of like how many games you have to you do have to play a certain amount of games in order to qualify for these. But if you miss the typical, you know, like two, three, four games, that's not going to disqualify from a, a player from hitting the under on it. So if the player gets injured, if he has lingering injuries, if a player surpasses them, if the quarterback gets injured, then like if Daniel Jones goes down, Darren Waller does not hit that number. Daniel Jones threw for like 12 touchdown, 15 touchdown passes last year. He is not a prolific passer. Darren Waller has not been good on a football field in like three years. I get he's the hypothetical target number one right now, but guess what? This that was that that was Kenny Galladay three years ago too. He's coming off a big year. He's the wide receiver one. We pay him a fat bag. It's again. It just goes back to like the amount of things that can go wrong in order for the under to hit. Are it's just so much more likely for that to happen. And I won a fuckload of money last year on season long props doing exactly that. The only ones I didn't hit were the ones that I took the overs on. So Devontae Adams with Jimmy G. I think Devontae Adams will be like fine. He'll hit. 20 to 12, 50, 1300 yards, but I'll take the lower because if he misses time and he's got Jimmy G who doesn't throw the ball deep, Miles Sanders, all these things, I just, you know, I'm, I'm out on the overs for everybody. Fuck, fuck them. Nobody knows how to play ball these days. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we're almost back up. What running backs are available? Ooh, okay. See, we're back on the clock. This is crazy. Kirk, Judy, Godwin. Like, y'all know I'm not the biggest fan of Najee Harris, but to get him at the 5'10, even in a 10 team league, that's probably what the equivalent of like the five two in a 12 teamer like Najee is an easy pick for me if if I'm fading RB I'm going zero RB like that's crazy value right there and then I get my pick of of the second running back that I want we have Kenneth Walker who's obviously going to be competing with Zach Charbonnet a little bit we got a wide receiver some interesting picks at wide receiver too but obviously we're gonna go back um I mean we could even go hero running back with just Najee and take DJ Moore, but we're not going to do that. Uh, Kenneth Walker's intriguing. Joe Mixon's intriguing. J.K. Dobbins, I think, is is my favorite pick right now. Actually, Alexander Madison is probably is kind of intriguing too, but maybe he falls to me later. I doubt it, but whatever. Uh, we're going to go J.K. Dobbins here. I'm, I'm really J.K. Dobbins this year. I think now that he's two years removed from the Wilson. It's just such a bad influence on me. I'm trying to lock in for the summer. I'm trying to lock in so I can provide you guys the best content ever you know, and just wake up every day, energized, juiced up, ready to show up and fucking deliver for you guys. And I have all my friends trying to make me fucking enter my villain era. The worst, the worst. So yeah, back to the point. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Dobbins there as my RB2 all day. Again, I, I think this offense is going to be obviously much better than it was last year. L. Jacks, all the weapons, Todd Munkin. You look back at Todd Munkin at Georgia, who were getting these passes? It was the tight ends and Brock Bowers and Ronald Washington, and it was the running backs, man. They didn't really have a wide receiver of consequence there. I think Dobbins is going to eat by far and away the best pass catcher in that backfield. And again, now two years removed, he was explosive as shit down the stretch last year. He was efficient. He was productive. He's going to be the guy going into this year. I think this is the year that we see him put together the season that we had hoped he was going to do within the first two years of his career. Yep, back to the over-unders. That's the first slip I put in. Nothing crazy, just a $50 slip. But we'll be doing a bunch of videos like just dedicated exactly to that. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe to the channel, obviously. Um, hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video as well. But yeah, they got a lot of them up here. And I'm telling you, the, the you need to do is you just need to have some discipline. Life's about discipline. Winning in season-long props is about discipline. You're going to look at everything and say, oh, easy over, easy over. Kirk Cousins, easy over with Jordan Addison coming to the team. Kirk Cousins like really barely hit this number last year if he misses a game doesn't hit that you know if something goes wrong doesn't hit that you got to understand that, again there's just so many outs for them not hitting it Tua, i love over 3800 but concussion scares me a little bit but again they've got all these offerings up on here so beautiful if tyler lockett fell to me here i wouldn't even really be mad about kyle pitts come on one more you know you want it daddy give it to me give it to me baby i also love cam Akers here and david montgomery all right let's go lock it in the chamber is Lockett falling now because of the Twitter videos of Jackson Smith and Jigba? Did JSN already went, didn't he? Did he? Oh, my God. 
So Tyler Lockett is now officially going around in three picks later than JSN, which is insane. Guys, like there's Twitter videos of JSN catching a ball. Did you think he wasn't capable of catching a fucking ball? God, I hate the summer on Twitter. So we'll take Lockett there. And we can go. I actually really like Dallas Goddard. And as I just said with Waller, I feel like the next tier of... Actually, it's not even the next tier. I, I just think Darren Waller should be ranked below these guys. Like I'll take Ingram over Waller. I think Njoku is probably like where Waller should be. I think those two should be in the same tier together. So I'll take Goddard here. And the team so far, Josh Allen, Najee Harris, J.K. Dobbins, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, Tyler Lockett, Dallas Goddard. I really like the squad so far. Easy to fucking say when you're drafting in the 10-team league, obviously, but it is what it is. This is the board so far. We see Gabe Davis go off at 8-7. Gabe Davis is a guy that I don't really have a hard opinion on based on where he's going in drafts now. And the fact that I took Josh Allen made him someone that I was thinking about targeting a little bit um, because I would like that stack. Oh, I think it would be a, an interesting stack here, but I, I don't really know what to make of him. I, I like Don Kincaid a ton. I think he's going to be an immediate impact player in that offense, but at wide receiver, they still don't have anyone else to really compete with Gabe Davis. So it's almost like he might just back his way into the same type of volume that he got last year for no reason. If he's a little bit more efficient or whatever reason, maybe just a little bit luck or, or I don't fucking know, um, then he could have a decent fantasy season. So we're back up in seven picks. Some running backs left on the board there. Ooh, you know what I could do? Oh, it could be a little bit spicy here if they fall to me. Oh, we got four picks. This guy's already got six wideouts. This could happen right here. I don't think so. This guy needs a wide receiver. I can go Brandon Cooks and Dak because I already have C.D. Lamb. and I could stack that entire Dallas passing offense. Like I've been talking shit about it. But based on what I said early on in the video, maybe I'm thinking about it backwards. Maybe they're just lying to us. Maybe they're telling us they want to run the ball. So teams are expecting them to run the ball. And then they pass it on. Come on, two more. Come to daddy. Fuck. Fuck. Now I don't want Dak. Now I don't fucking want him. Running back for shot whites, whatever. My receivers. These guys stink too. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to reverse it. Uno fucking reversal. Now we've got Njoku. Now we've got Deshaun Watson, and we've got Amari Cooper. So we reversed the stack. I thought it was going to be the stack of Dak, Amari Cooper, and Brandon Cooks. However, now it's Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper, and David Njoku. And I realized I said Amari Cooper because he played on Dallas, but I meant C.D. Lamb. Ooh, the brain is firing today. I feel like I'm going to combust. Kind of uh, not a strategy I typically do where I fill out my quarterbacks and tight ends early. One thing that I've been toying around with a lot more is the idea of having three tight ends because, all right, so on, on underdog, if, again, if you're new here, this is a best ball platform. If you've never played best ball, you draft a large team and then the software automatically starts the best players at each position each week based on that starting lineup that I said. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and a flex. So basically, you know, your best three wide receivers will get thrown to your starting lineup each week. And then depending on how many total points you have at the end of the season, relative to everybody else in the league, you'll win money if you're in the top three. So the way you're drafting is a little bit different because you don't have to choose sit starts. And in order for like a tight end to pretty much finish inside the top 12 each week, which is what you're kind of aiming for, top 10, top 12, basically you just need to score a touchdown. So between the three guys that you draft, you're looking for you know, a touchdown of 40 yards or something like that. So I kind of like the idea of, of grabbing three tight ends and you know kind of hoping that they provide those results on a weekly basis rather than paying up for a Kelsey or a Mark Andrews. However, I usually only do that if one of my options is bad. So I need to get a third option there. But I like both of the tight ends I have and I like both of the quarterbacks I have. So I might just rack up skill position players from here on out. Just running backs, just wide receivers. Goes Javonta Williams and Alvin Kamara, the all who knows what the fuck is going on team. So just on a side note, uh, most of you guys just know me from fantasy football content, but I love making content. And I make a lot of content about making content. All right. So I have a podcast and a separate YouTube, YouTube channel called Big Content which I will link down below. Uh, it basically is focused solely on helping people go from like an idea or passion about a specific subject to a full-time content creator. So we're doing long form podcasts between me and Jack Settleman. I do uh, weekly Q and A videos that are specific to whatever problem that you're going through, et cetera. So I just wanted to plug that quickly as I start yelling about fantasy football again. Okay, so back on the clock, nothing too enticing. 
on the breads of the sandwich. So we're going to look back at the playmakers. Are there any wide receivers that stick out here? Because that's kind of where I want to go. No. Um, Samaje, I feel like, is going to be a playmaker for the first six weeks of the season. Brian Robinson's going to have a big role. Let's go B-Rob. Oh, wait. Fuck. I like Antonio Gibson. This is half PPR, so I'm not going to get like over my skis about pass-catching running backs necessarily because it's not super heavily favored there. I like Zay Jones a lot more than the guys ahead of him. Cortland Sutton was just miserable last year at Russell Wilson, so it's really hard emotionally to buy back into him. I like Jarek McKinnon. I don't want to stack too many running backs, though, unless, unless that we do want to do that. I took B-Rob. Fuck it. I don't, I don't really like any of the wide receivers. So I took Samaje because I am very nervous about Javante Williams. As I've said quite a few times, Javante Williams, the, the vibe from him feels uh, spectacularly similar to J.K. Dobbins's vibes last summer where like every report was negative, but people for some reason continued to draft him and earlier. He was like the RB 17, I think by the time the season started, which was nuts, but at least people have learned their lesson. Now it's like Javante Williams is the RB like 28, 29. So the discount is there. The discount from the lesson learned is absolutely there, which I think that means Samaji P Ryan. Let's see if they got uh, props up for P Ryan or Javante. Can we search here? So uh, that's a pretty high fucking number for a backup. That tells me that they're expecting him to play a very significant role. That's just rushing yards, and P. Ryan's a good pass catcher. So I bet you their pitch prop is probably closer to 900-ish, 850, 900. Uh, they don't have anything for Javante. They probably won't put any injured player slips up there for a while. Um, so Samaj, I think, is a really sneaky player to take outside of the top 100 picks at the running back position. I will say I saw a report today um, from a guy out at Eagles camp. He's an Eagles by a uh, beat reporter and i've seen the name on twitter a lot because he says a lot of like, ridiculous things I'm not even sure he still works for the team uh, but he said his dark horse to make the team is trey sermon and don't be surprised if rashad penny gets cut and i cut to it and i responded to it i quote tweeted it you can go follow me on twitter if you're not already it's it's elliot shore parks i think trey sermon is going to push for roster spot penny is my potential surprise cut trade and i said i definitely wouldn't put money on penny getting cut but it's the reason i've been hesitantly fading guys like him and Damian Harris this offseason NFL teams that give these guys million dollar contracts don't care what they did for your fantasy team in 2019 you don't understand these, these running backs are like milk man they expire really fucking quickly and kind of like out of nowhere one day it's good you're putting in your cereal one day they're running for a thousand yards the next year the next day the NFL teams get to see everything behind the scenes that you don't and you just think about like fantasy and my next point was, here are a list of guys that will make people on Twitter lose their mind if they were to get cut, but shouldn't because this, I wouldn't put my money on these guys getting cut, but it would not surprise me in the slightest. Well, we'll get back to that because I'm about to get on the clock. Yeah, Damian Harris, one of those guys, hesitant to take him. We're in the 13th round. Maybe this is where I look his way. Maybe not. Damn, I really want Michael Gallup here. I wish I had gotten Dak. I would have had Cooks Gallup. That would actually have been a terrible strategy. Uh, we're going to take Michael Gallup here as one of the picks. He's clearly a tier ahead for me from all of these dudes. Don't know Mooney's like a weird case this year, too. I have, uh, I, I got whiskey click on him every single time I try to take him. I just don't know what his deal is there with the new staff and all these new weapons coming into Chicago. He just feels like such a role player to the point that he might not be super relevant. Rashi Rice is kind of interesting to me. He's going to play such a, like a backup role, though. I guess Rondell Moore is kind of cool, too, here. Not really, I guess, but he, he's like, he's got to play a lot, right? Like, there's no choice but to put him onto the field. It's like Greg Dorch, him, and Marquise Hollywood Brown. Greg Dorch is definitely going to play over him. Michael Wilson is also my, my last round pick in every draft. Let's grab Rashi Rice. I haven't got a lot of him because I feel like you have to pay up for him. But he's the kind of exciting, athletic young rookie there in Kansas City. Bigger body size. He kind of fits a mold that they haven't had there for a while. They've been comparing him to Juju, but Juju's like a slot zone guy. Rashi Rice is like a playmaker on the sidelines, in my opinion. So I think he adds an element to the Kansas City Chiefs team that they haven't really had in a while. So I'll take a I'll take back to Twitter. Um, so again, guys that will make people on Twitter lose their mind if they were to get cut, but shouldn't. I had Damian Harris, Rashad Penny, James Robinson, Keyshawn Vaughn, any Jet running back not named Brees Hall or Dalvin Cook. And I would have said Gus Edwards. He, like, fit the mold of the guys I'm looking for. But his salary is $2 million to keep him. It would actually cost him $4 million to cut him, which is crazy. And then there was a reply to my tweet that I replied to. Okay, here it was. The guy said, uh, your point is strong, but I want to point out that Penny had a great 2022 before injury as well. Right. And my point, my counterpoint, to counterpoint, I was saying, sure, I'm just stating that these running backs just have a very short leash. 
if the team sees anything that they don't like all those guys are on very small contracts all those guys have like a two million dollar contract at most if they were to get cut then the team's dead cap would be far less than whatever salary was reported on twitter i was saying these guys have a very short leash if the team sees anything they don't like in camp if someone young emerges and seems really explosive or a guy like Rashad Penny, who continues to rack up these significant injuries. Like eventually they take tolls on your ligaments and the scar tissue within your lower body. And they see like, you know what? He's lost a step. He is the million dollar guy that we signed him to. They have no financial incentive, no real tie to keep that guy. on. Like I'm just saying the running backs go bad. They go sour. They get spoiled very quickly. And these teams have the most close up view of what they are in this very moment present of time that we don't get so don't be surprised if these guys who were admittedly awesome like a year or two years ago are not the same guy anymore we are one pick away on our 15th and 16th round picks these drafts are 18 rounds uh, like i said i want to keep hammering wide receivers or just skill players in general we're seeing some interesting rookies fall here though kendry miller and rochon johnson i don't hate raheem mosert or devin singletary down here or even jeff wilson so kind of just backfields I want a piece of. Do we like any of the wide receivers here? I'm not in love with anyone on this list. I do think I should probably be taking a little bit more Alec Pierce. Didn't love him as a player, but he's kind of similar to Rashi Rice in the playing style. And if Anthony Richardson's on the field, he's going to have a cannon of an arm, and Pierce would probably benefit from that. I like Downs more as a player, but he's going to be a slot guy, so I don't exactly know what his upside is. I also like some, so some of my favorite later round dudes – are Michael Wilson, Terrace Marshall. Do we want to hit that again? Uh, I'm going to take Kendra Miller. Miller, for some reason, just continues to creep into my mind as a dude who's going to uh, be like a league-winning running back over the last, like, like in fantasy playoffs. I don't know when he's going to get onto the field, but when he does, he's going to be a beast. He's going to do to Alvin Kamara what Alvin Kamara did to everybody in New Orleans his rookie year. That's my hot take. That's my hot take for the year. I like a lot of the rookie running backs down here um, in this area. I really like Tank Bigsby at 145. I like Kendra Miller. I uh, wasn't in love with Roshan Johnson, but I just thought the, the hype was going to supersede where he'd go in drafts. But as you can clearly see, he's going. Roshan Johnson's going after fucking Tyler Higby. So I'm I'm fine with that pick. Bike baby for our final two picks. And both of the guys I like are still available. Do we sit here with five running backs? I'm very okay with the five running backs that we have right now and the lack of. Actually, I don't hate Tyler Algier all the way here in the last round. Obviously, Bijan is there, and we don't love him sitting next to Bijan, but, like, come on. Come on. Fuck it. We're going to shit both receivers. No, we have eight. We have Yeah, fuck it. Nine. Let's go. Michael Wilson, big body. Only big body they got that out there in Arizona. Chris Brout runner. Love to see it. Terrace Marshall. Uh, they don't really have a lot of weapons there either. They did draft Jonathan Mingo, brought in Adam Thielen, but Adam Thielen's old as shit. Terrace Marshall had like a low-key kind of good year last year, and I feel like he could be a playmaker. He's still young. Let's not give up on Mr. Terrace Marshall yet. Okay. So this is the final team we got right here. Josh Allen, Deshaun Watson, Najee Harris, J.K. Dobbins, Brian Robinson, Samaj P. Ryan, Kendra Miller. A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Mark Cooper, Tyler Lockett, Michael Gallup, Rashi Rice, Alec Pierce, Michael Wilson, Terrace Marshall, Dallas Goddard, David Njoku. Obviously, the running backs are a little bit weak, but I fuck with this team. I, I, I faded them so I can get the Josh Allens, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lambs, those types. So I feel relatively good about that. Let me know how y'all feel about my team. And I would like to let you know how I feel about your team. If you draft with us, join the Discord. More importantly, download the Underdog app. Go to the Underdog website. Sign up, use promo code BDGE, and you will get a 100% deposit match when you do so. And go grab those season-long props. Let me know which ones you like the most. I'm out of here. If you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. I'll see y'all on Monday. Actually, tomorrow on our business blog, but Monday after that.